check. Check, check, check. We're going to get right into it. Right into it. I got a, I got a chord line. I just want to play it. Oh, I got to sit down. I got to sit down line. Bring it. Show me. No, it's still good. Still good. I liked it. I liked it. It was good. <laughs> but how are we doing today? How are you doing, guys? My name is Dylan. That's Austin. And of course, we are Theseus Live, and obviously, we play garbage music. <laughs> We're Theseus Live, but we don't do well live. Uh, not not improv live. Uh, or TikTok live. We don't do TikTok. <laughs> We don't do well TikTok live either. <laughs> Today, we got suspended twice in less than 30 minutes on TikTok. Yep, suspended till the 16th now. We Sorry. got banned once, got reapproved on an appeal, and then uh, got banned again, and now we have to wait till the sorry, 16th. Sorry, TikTok. We did not mean to. I'm sorry. <laughs> One word out of line, and you're just like, oh, it's all over. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't it's think it would be, <laughs> but... How you been, man? How what are we doing today? How how have you how have you what have you been going through? Uh, well, as a musician, uh, I was told separate separate your drumming stuff from your personal stuff. So what? I decided to uh, make a business. Yeah, got my drumming oh, drumming yes. business, and today was the day that we had to do taxes for that. And uh, doing that as like a music business is weird. Why? Because apparently the LLC is personal. It's a personal LLC that's completely different from a regular LLC. Apparently, there's a whole bunch of different branches of LLC. But uh, yeah, in the that's interesting. So I guess she's like making, or she was charging you for taxes on yourself and the LLC at the same time, same income. Yeah. Which I was not expecting. Yeah, that is weird. Huh? But for all uh, musicians that want to build an LLC for yourself to uh, do that, it gets a little weird. Uh, but I don't advise you. Well, I advise you to do it rather than not. I guess I think in the end. I mean, it's definitely saving you money a hundred percent. Because good lord, if you had to pay taxes on your income now because you couldn't write anything off, you would have had. I, not that much, probably like a thousand dollars, uh, fifteen hundred. But amongst what you made, that's a lot. <laughs> and amongst what you have, that's a lot. Also, paid drummer, <laughs> successful career choice, made the <laughs> lowest amount of money I've ever had in my life. <laughs> okay, if you guys want to know, we could bleep this out. But if you want to know how much you made, uh, it is the lowest tax bracket. <laughs> 
Hell yeah. I've never in, even Hey, been. but I got paid to play. You did. I made more personally played drums this year than some bands have ever made. That's very true. I mean... I'll take it. That's, I mean, as far as Illustrator, I mean, we didn't make any money off of it. It was just a bunch of fun. Yeah. Of course, we wanted to go play and everything like that, but I didn't get to. But that's okay. Other than that, uh, I also had to pay taxes, and it sucked. So, taxes suck. And that's it. Thank you, government. <laughs> <laughs> Stop taking money from me. I agree. I agree. Uh, I have been in an absolute battle. You guys don't see this, and you, you'll probably hear it, though. I've been in an absolute battle with my Behringer X32 rack system. I just want to be able to... <laughs> I want to be able to... And t if you guys even know how to do this, tell me. But I want to be able to record his drum set, his microphone, my microphone, and my guitar all at the same time. But I also want to use it as an interface... Like, I want to be able to bypass the recording part to where all microphones are live so it's, it can be caught by some other program. But, so have all those go into the rack system. And then I want to be able to separate this mic and your mic. There's, four, there's eight outputs back there. And all I need to do is have all the instruments go to two outputs so the music passes through as well as the recording. And then we can be heard and I can change our volumes as needed because right now the volume is just what it is what about um I mean they at least for what I remember don't they have an input for a talkback mic yeah and I use that talkback to go into OBS on a computer okay that's how I do it, it it's a talkback it'll go and it completely goes through unless you hit like mute buttons yeah. obviously if you mute things they're just muted all the way around and that's what I'm doing to record on OBS which helps a lot. Uh, the main outs are going to my in ears so we can talk. Mm -hmm. And I want, but for some reason, I cannot figure out how to get all of these mics, everything, to just go to two outputs and then <coughs> our voices to go to two outputs. I mean, I can get yours and mine to go to one or two outputs, one and two, but I cannot get every single instrument to go to just two main outs. I, yeah. I don't know how to do it. I cannot figure it out. If anyone knows, <laughs> I'm just trying to make this as easy as possible, basically. If you think of anything, please let me know, because I've tried a bunch of different ways. But the biggest thing is, is when we talk, this is what I want to happen. When we talk, I want to be able to turn, basically, the uh, these microphones, just take them all the way down. like yeah. Almost like they're gated, but like take them all the way down to nothing. And then I can have them separately so I can make them sound better later. And I could denoise it if there's noise. That's the biggest yeah. thing. I'm running into noise. I think right now, because of the microphones that you chose this time, I'm, I don't have any noise. I think these are all non-powered microphones. Yep. But, yeah. It's been a battle. The Axe FX3 is very complicated. Oh, I'm sure. Good it God. It is so complicated, and I don't know how to make shit sound good. <laughs> it is very difficult because like I don't like I really like the PV sixty five oh five plus I have a, I'm a big fan of it but I got the Axe FX for like road use and I actually have an amp above that which is a Seymour Duncan amp that's a very strong amp and but I want it to sound very close to a PV head pretty yeah. pretty pretty close to it because not because of its like metal capabilities because that's usually what it's used for but the fact that it has a resonance knob that's like low gain. As in, like, it boosts the gain on the low end so it sounds, like, growly. That's why everyone loves the PV6505 and the 5150 is because the low end resonance knob just boosts the gain only in the low end section. So there's a lot of boom. Huh. That's why that, that amp is so, like, legendary. And then the, the Mesa dual rectifier and the triple rectifier, <clears throat> that motherfucker is just beefy. And it just has a really good tone. Yeah. As far as its special knobs, if it does anything specific, I don't know. That is sick that it does. It like boosts the low end, so it's like you really get that ump. Yeah, it boosts the low end gain. So yeah. it's like you have a gain knob, and then you have your EQ, and then you have a resonance knob. A pedance, uh, the presence knob is like, it's almost like it cuts through. I don't exactly know what a presence knob does, but it does... You can significantly hear a difference when you turn the presence up or down. And when I when they say it's presence, they're not kidding. Like if you turn the presence up, you'll be able to hear the guitar cut through everything. If you pull the presence down, it's almost like background noise. Yeah, it is weird. Hmm. Uh, the presence knob is really cool, but that's on every amp. And then the resonance knob, resonating, 
It's because of chunk stuff like this. Like if I had that resonance knob, it would be like way beefier. The low end would crank too. Like right now you're hearing mid and higher gains and a little bit of low. That's what that little flap is. But yeah, that's why I love that amp so much. That's why every like it's with every metal band out there. It is a sick one. I remember I wanted one for a little bit, but I didn't know anything like that. Right. That's and it's like road proven too, so it's like really durable. That's why and they're kind of, they're really easy to get. But mm. there was, and this is really weird too. There was, and I don't know if it's a 6505 plus specifically or the 6505, but there was a batch of 6505s or 6505 pluses. It might even be the 5150. I don't remember exactly that had a transistor that was changed. And that transistor changed the sound so much that people look specifically for ones with that transistor. Hmm. There's, yeah, there's a difference between early models and later models. And the early models is what everybody <laughs> wants. Yeah, it's one of those things where I guess someone made a staple sound, but then they try to change it and it did not help. Yeah, they didn't change it. Well, I oh. think what happened was they didn't want to change it. They had to because, like, the people that made the transistors didn't go out of business or they lost contract or something with them. Yeah. So it was like, we have to put a transistor here, but we need a different brand, which had a different tone. It had some kind of different sound. Uh, so that was that's, like, the big thing behind them. Uh, but that's really small things that I know specifically about that. Yeah. There is a imitation plug-in <clears throat> of the 6505 Plus and the 5150s and all that called revalve it's by pv incredible incredible program you can change its entire blueprint out like you can change like transistors inside of amp heads that's digitally sick. and it's bizarre i don't have any idea what the hell is happening yeah i want like, some stuff like that <clears throat> but it's like knowing st i mean you can get that that's only 100 bucks if you ever want revalve it's 100 bucks might have gone up since i bought it it was 99 yeah it's a very good program for guitars uh it's just that they're competing now with, you know, neural DSP, which but make insane tones. They make insane tones, but they're also like 130 to 150 bucks. Hopefully, Revalve's not. I don't think it would be. Yeah, because I haven't seen anything neural that was like at 100 bucks. Yeah. The ones that I have were, I think, 129. Right. And this is the thing is like, you could spend all this time. I was trying to think of this. I was thinking about this the other day. I was like, God, I just don't need to spend any more time on s certain things. Like, yes, I know information on my PV amp. I know information on the, F the Axe effects. I know information on my Behringer. But it's like, that does not translate to playing live. It might make a better sound eventually. And that is really yeah. what it like comes down to. But like, you j I think I should just try to be at my peak playing style to be as good as possible and sing as good as possible to make... Even like bad stuff sound good, yeah. You know, and they and someone was trying to say the same thing about Eddie Van Halen. And they were like, if Eddie, Eddie Van Halen picked up your guitar, whatever it was, he's still gonna play like Eddie Van Halen. Yeah, he might not know anything about any fucking amp that he's ever used. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, someone else found out for him, so he did what was the important part, which was playing. But it is still really fun. I think I have all the equipment I'll literally ever need. <laughs> the only thing I want to upgrade is my drum set. That's Same. It. I want to. You have an amazing drum set. I want to buy a ten inch tom. I want to buy a few more things. Well, that's that's upgrading to your existing drum set. That'd be like me being like, I want to change these pickups. Yeah. It's the same thing, you know. True. I don't know. I, I just think, and here's the here's the other problem that I wasn't I didn't inform you of. I wanted to uh, get a drum set because who who was a uh, who was supposed to be coming over your house later? Uh, Pablo. So. Pablo was supposed to come over to your house later, and he is an exceptionally good drummer. Uh, yes. Pablo who? Paviros. You played in uh, Chelsea Grin. Right. <clears throat> very good drummer. Very, very good drummer. And if we like had him over for our podcast, I would be very upset if this was here as a drum set for him. Oh, I was already thinking that I would have I my like, drum set uh, over here. I know. So I was like, God... I don't need to upgrade into microphones. You need to upgrade into microphones yeah, for I'm, your live sound. Yeah, I'm going to get some. Um, but I need to upgrade the drum set because that's just, you know, it's our podcast. So it's like the best of both worlds. I don't want you to have to bring over 
your drum set every single time. It's the whole yeah. reason I have this drum set set up. Plus, I like drumming, so I <laughs> want to I want to do some drum stuff. <laughs> I don't blame you. Drumming's it, too fun. You know, if we had him over. I want to at least have a good, decent drum set. Yeah. This is not that good of a drum set. No, nah, especially because the freaking dude at Guitar Center gave them all like snare heads for these things. Yeah, I don't. I, I was just like, I need these heads, and I don't know what I'm doing. Help me out. And he that was guy like, didn't okay. know what he was doing either. Uh, clearly not, because what's what's going on with the heads on my drum set? All of these are snare bottom rezo heads. Uh. They're all, I'm pretty sure they're all just like single ply uh, that I'm pretty sure I would actually use this as the rezo head. <laughs> Are you serious? I feel like I would use these as the rezo and then the bottom one is the really, really thin snare side one because it's supposed to have the snares. Like it's supposed to be very reactive to those snares on the bottom. But like I would literally put this one on the bottom and then put a, a dual ply on top. On top. <clears throat> now, I will say that Austin did have a problem with telling me the correct thing first. He gave me the Don't wrong. Push it on me. Put, push it on that guitar. You center. gave me it's the, the guitar no, center guy. You gave me the wrong head names. He was like, "I'm pretty sure I use." ambassador heads and you don't you don't use any ambassador heads he's <laughs> like I, I use ambassador heads by the way oh yeah and i have a guy at guitar center who doesn't know what the fuck he's doing <laughs> so he's gonna give you all these shit heads and i spent like 180 dollars sucks <laughs> sucks to suck <laughs> <laughs> no but i, I mean, got them for you they are better than what you had but yeah for sure they still could be a lot better I just want them to sound... I want a bad drum set to sound good. And I would bring over... Uh, I mean, I have... I would say that the bass drum head and the, the bass drum both sides are actually correct. I think you use yeah. power strokes. Yeah. This, uh, this is all good, but I do have, uh, I think, an extra 12 that I could use. Uh, maybe not a 14 on here, but I do not have... A size 14, like regular head. Mm. I have like a snare head, size 14, but that's it. I did I did highly think about selling my car to get a drum set. Like, I legitimately want a drum set more, like a nice drum set more than I want that. Like, I just want a DW kit that I'm going to have forever, yeah. one kit, and then uh, some decent cymbals for a couple of years. Like high, and I only need, I mean, you only need four cymbals, realistically. Of course, if you want to do more, you can. Yeah, I've been looking into uh, the Minol series because I, I I know I've had Zildjian for so long, but I think Minol I do really like. The only thing is transitioning from one set of expensive symbols to another set of expensive symbols is very, very expensive. Yes, <laughs> like you're gonna sell your symbols for like not maybe like three fourths of the quarter, like three quarters. Of the price that you paid for them, which then whenever you go to translate to getting more symbols, like you're going to pay four or five hundred dollars to get the same amount of symbols. They're just a different brand. Right. But well, I mean, that's still a <clears throat> still not bad. It's like, oh, I rented these symbols for the last five years for five hundred bucks. True. Yeah. I should have done that. We need to be able to see if we're recording, <laughs> <laughs> like legitimately. Anyways, uh, yeah, the. I want a DW drum set for people that so they can come over and play. I have six string guitars and a nice seven string guitar. Nice six strings, nice seven strings. I don't have any eight strings, but that's because, Damn. well, it's like if I had a guitarist come over who was like, oh, yeah, I play eight strings. Do you have any? I would probably have them bring their own guitar. Yeah. You know, drum set, not so much. It's like you kind of just have to play the drum set that's there. Yeah. You know, and then bass guitar and even microphones. I would give them a telephone. And it's like, all right, let's, let's see what you got. One shot, one opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> it should be uh, seven and nine. Oh, no, okay, never mind. It's 
such a good song. Oh, absolutely. It's the best song. I love being able to do that. I, I hate that. I can't say that it's the best song that he's ever written, but it is absolutely going to be the one that he will forever known be known for. He wrote it during the filming of 8 Mile, I believe. Right. It was, it was a soundtrack song. Yeah. It wasn't even a song that was going to get out. And there was another version prior to the one that he released. Yeah. It was the same track. It was just different. All the, the whole verses, all the verses were different. Oh, it's such a good song. Which is crazy. Such an iconic song. I love it. It does remind me a lot of the childhood because, like, I'd go to like Louisville Bats baseball games, and that's like played twenty times every time. And then they have to pay him for the amount of people at the stadium for paying that song. God, what? he's made so much. Okay, you got to explain that. So if they play it. They have to pay whatever their attendance was in like stream. I don't think it's exactly attendance. I think it is because it could be attendance, but it is like not attendance. But it, it like it's the way that UFC. It's similar to the way the UFC charges for like bars. It's square footage. So like square footage, the bigger the bar, doesn't mean you can hold more people. But if you want to play UFC fights, it's like square footage of the bar or max capacity. Yeah. And you have to charge max capacity for each fight. Like you can't. That's the reason why you don't. You go to a bar and you never see UFC games or UFC fights. So how much you think uh, he makes off of like a two thousand, three thousand cap place? You think that's like? Oh. Do you I think see. they have to pay like what, two, three, four hundred dollars? Well, it's like I would assume per stream. It's that's one stream per person, and they have yeah. to report that to BMI. The only reason I know they have to report that is because my vocal teacher owned a bar and the reason why he had to pay B he always had to pay BMI every year. Yeah. Which is insane. I guess if you get caught, it's really bad. So he oh, was sure. completely legitimate. Instead of just playing whatever was on a cell phone, he would play I don't know, maybe a, a list of selected tracks and then pay BMI to be able to put those in as plays for that track and that track and that track and that track which how do you is keep track of how many times the song plays <coughs> i don't know if you're just working and you're not realizing it like oh here comes eminem again mark it down yeah i don't know man <laughs> yeah I, I truly don't know like how could they keep track there's probably been millions of dollars worth of plays never recorded oh i'm sure that well, I, bmi is a company that i would love to like get insight on to be like what do you guys how do you guys track something like that yeah it is like word of mouth true to your heart like you were supposed to but like bmi will come after you or the record companies will come after you and sue you out of your pants if you don't report it yeah there was one thing bmi uh chris from soft spoken is telling me this it was like um uh, whenever you get streaming revenue it's like he was telling me you get your you get your main streaming revenue from BMI, so you get whatever that cost is, but that's like matched with something else that you have to sign up for, or like you have to sign in or like you have to make an account with something like that, and it's basically like a matched price with what you're getting paid through your streams. So like if you have one stream income, say you got seven thousand dollars. <coughs> In stream income last year, if you were to go and set up this other entity or whatever whatever it is, there might be another seven thousand dollars sitting there that you have to go and actually retrieve. But I don't really know exactly how that works. I've never seen it. I was just told that. I would love to know. I would love, really love to be able to talk to either one of the employees from BMI and who was the other? Isn't there two two entities that collect all the revenue for everyone? Uh, I mean, there's like publishing and stuff like that. I don't know. There's, I mean, there's distributions like TuneCore. Is it TuneCore? Yeah. And those are distributions. And then publishing is, I don't know exactly what publishing is. A yeah, publishing deal is, it's beyond us because we haven't been there. Uh, but BMI is the most confusing because that's like where they collect the money. That is, yeah. the, that is the people that collect the money. And I get really confused because I'm assuming... I'm assuming they're taking a certain percentage of your revenue, and that's how they're making revenue. See, and Chris from Softspoken, every time we played a Softspoken show, he would get the amount of people that was at the show and then say, hey, we played this song, this song, this song, and this song, and this many people heard it. So he gets paid from doing that. Which is bizarre to me. It is bizarre because it's literally you're getting paid to... You're getting paid out of nothing. 
So like essentially There's nothing coming in. It's just like you're making up a magic number. Yeah. So essentially like people like that jelly roll, seventy thousand people show, he could say, Hey, I played this, 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 and this, and all of a sudden he's got four million streams because he played like ten shows. He played well, not even ten shows, but like let's say playing to seventy thousand oh. people. And he played his whole catalog. Yeah, so he's getting like seventy thousand, hundred forty thousand. Uh, like, what is that? 21, 100, what's the math? Yeah. 121,000? Yeah, yeah. 70, yeah. 140,000, 21,000. So, like, he's 20, essentially getting a million streams by the end of math. the night. So, a million streams is, what do we say that we thought that was? Like, was between like $7,200? Yeah. $7,250, so like, roughly? Think, like, if he is doing that, that's potentially another, we'll just say, five to $8,000. Like somewhere in that range, just to play a show for the night. Yeah, and that and it's like, where is that coming from? What, like, where does that money come from? Literally nothing. It's <clears throat> word of mouth. You are putting in information, and you're getting out money mm-hmm. for who knows why. And it's like that is where I get lost. Does Spotify pay that? Does Apple Music pay that? Someone has to pay that. It might come from BMI. So BMI would just like. I just don't see a reason why BMI would be like, oh, by the way, we'll just give you money for whatever plays you I say mean, you did. It might come from Spotify to BMI, and BMI pays you out. I I have no idea, but there really is like a whole like there's a whole underground world with music that like no one knows about. And that's what we're trying <laughs> to get to. We're also trying to get to reason why the music industry is so goddamn sleazy mm-hmm. and screws artists. But I understand exactly why they do. And the reason why they do is because they're taking the real risk. If they're not getting their payment in 85, like say it's 85%, 15%, such as most contracts, I understand because they're putting hundreds of thousands of dollars to get their money back, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I really hope we make enough money. But it seems like, it seems like the reason why they're putting so much money into it is because it's it's like proven. It yeah. is foolproof proven. I think anyone and, can get big if you throw... Well, not anyone, but like if you're decent, like if you're good at what you do and like you can make good music, literally all you need is the money back behind you to make you appear. Yeah. And apparently, and not only that, most of the contracts make the artist liable for the money that they've spent. So regardless of what, how much money the company spends, they will absolutely get it back. If not from streams, they will get it back from the artist. So yeah. it's almost like there is almost no, there's no investment into yeah. someone. It's just there is a contract and we won't lose. It's basically it's saying like, you're going to give me permission to spend your money. Yes, which how is, you need is to spend crazy. It. it is crazy to me. But you know, you can't do everything. But yeah. that's what your manager is kind of for. It's like, okay, the artist should, which is the artist is a uh, thing that Prince was upset by. That's why he lost his name. That's why he called himself the artist at one point. Uh, contractual stuff. Yeah. He couldn't even, the reason why he changed his name was because uh, the record company owned his name. So he couldn't be Prince. That's why he turned himself into a symbol. <laughs> I know. Two Eminem references. I know we're on fire, <laughs> but that's it. Really, was a that was the reason because he couldn't. He was not Prince anymore. He was like, I'm out of this contract. You have the own the rights to my name, is what it is. I don't want it. I don't want it anymore. I just want my music. Stop taking my music. Yeah, you know. Uh, and Jelly Roll is trying to change that. It's really odd because he says that he's trying to change it, and then apparently there's like a distribution deal or a publishing deal. Publishing deals are different than. Uh, normal sound, deals. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, it's the other way around, where you pay publisher 15% and you keep 85%. Supposedly, I saw someone on TikTok say that. That's not. Yeah. There's no factual premise behind that. Supposedly, that is true. But you have to come up with like three or $400,000 just to do that. Hmm. So, it's a, it's a lot of risk. It's a whole lot of risk on your own part. There's one thing I want to bring up after this, but uh, yeah, like it's literally just telling someone, hey... Like, I want to, you let me have a million dollars and I make you ten. And that's just, I would be so scared. I'd be so scared to take that leap if I was a solo artist. But I know. you'd have to be really smart with your money. 
Make sure you're not wasting it and stuff like that. You'd have to be really smart. Mainly just like so conservative that you are, yeah, as conservative as possible to make sure that you don't go just deeper and deeper and deeper into debt. Just deeper and deeper. I mean, it's like literally, okay, I have a big chunk of money if you did. Mm-hmm. Just pay off a house. It's like, okay, now you have a permanent place to live. It is. This is where you live. And yeah, they're going to say like over a lifetime, it's going to be cheaper <clears throat> if you just rent. Well, if you have a huge chunk of money, just spend it on the house. And yes, you could move, but now you have equity. So you'll get that money back if you want to sell the house. Yeah. And guess what? The housing market goes up like 3 to 6% every year. You don't lose money. In fact, you make money. So, I, I, you know, there's so many like very wealthy people that are encouraged renting sometimes. And I'm just like, I don't understand why. Yeah. You just throw money away. It's like you, you rent to try to save money over the course of like a, apparently between 11, like 11 to 13 years if you rent over that course of time you will save money. But if you go any longer than that, you start to lose money. Yeah. So, which is, which is really confusing. But you do that, you get your studio set up the way you need it to so you can record stuff. If you are the type of artist that has to go out and get things done for you, it's almost not a good thing to do that anymore, which sucks for home studios or it sucks for studios because mm-hmm. it's like, they could be really good. But you can still go to, you can still go to studios all day. I mean, uh, you know, there's there's some really good studios around here that make great songs and they they're gonna know more than you because that's all they do and all yeah. you do is play. But if you have those two things on lock, well, you're like, okay, I've got mixing down and I've got songwriting down, and that's all you need. You could be a huge artist. Yeah. Back on that Prince thing, real quick. Did you see that like little bit of documentary about uh, his vault, no. his music vault? I have no idea. Literally, he's got a music vault that has. I think well over 2,000 songs unheard. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, he said he, uh, like his people said they wrote a song a day for like years. And they would just get done writing a song, throw it, like he'd, they would throw the actual, like, um, the, the recording on a wheel and just go put it up. And you open up this vault and it's just like 200, 200, 200, 200. 200, 200, 200, like just stacks of songs. Yeah. And uh, they said uh, by the time, like, I think they got it up to like 2,000 plus songs. I don't know if they had an exact count on it, but they they were just talking about like he would write, he'd go for writing an album, get a concept, and then just write like, who knows, probably hundreds of songs and then be like, okay, these... 10, 15, 20, like, fit this feel that I want. Mm-hmm. And then all the other ones just get locked up and unheard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man, we didn't notice. Thank you guys so much for watching. I didn't notice that uh, my camera died, so you're going to be seeing a lot of Austin as far as, uh, you he know. he does most of the talking. I do a majority of the talking this, <laughs> this episode. But thanks, guys. Please check out all of our socials. I'm Dylan. It's Austin. Bye.